The next concept that I want to talk about is the global object. I'm throwing all these concepts at you because I think these are the building blocks to kind of understand how scopes work in JavaScript. So let's look at the concept of the global object. You remember I told you that when you declare a variable and that variable is not, you know, the variable declaration is not in a function, then that becomes a global variable. So if I say var a equals 10 here, now a is a global variable. If I have a function foo and then inside this function, I say var b equals 20, now b is not a global variable because this is inside a function. So the scope of b is the scope of this function. Since this is outside any function, this is the global scope. Now I've been talking about the global scope, but what you also need to understand is there is this global object. And that object is kind of like, like the root object, which uh, holds all these global variables. The root object or the global object depends on which runtime you're using. Here, I'm using Firefox. I'm running JavaScript in the browser. So when you run JavaScript in the browser, the global object is usually the window object, okay? When a JavaScript piece of code runs in a browser, it's usually due to a page loading in a window, okay? You access a URL, and then that URL loads a page, and that page happens to have JavaScript, and that's how you run JavaScript in a browser, right? That's typically how you do it. So the global object in that case is the window that has loaded the page and it's executing the JavaScript. So there is a global object called window every time you execute JavaScript in a browser. So I can actually get the window object by just typing window here and I hit enter. Now you see here the window shows about blank because I have a blank page open, but I can actually click on this and see the object. Now we see here there is a bunch of properties that this window object contains. And uh, these properties are actually global properties because window is a global object. Now, a little known secret is whenever you create a global uh, variable, right? So let's say I do a var abc equals 100 and I reload and run. Now, what happens is if I open the window object again, notice that it has a property called abc and it has the value 100. What's going on here? Now let's say I declare one more. I say var def equals hello window object. And I'm going to reload and run again. And let's open the window object again. And there you go, def. There's a property on the window and it contains the value over here. So basically what's happening is when you create a global variable, you're actually creating a property on this global object. Every global variable is a property on the global object, okay? This is actually happening behind the scenes and we don't even know it. We can access the global variable def by accessing def directly or we can do window dot def and they both mean the exact same thing. Okay, so even though you feel that you're creating random variables and assigning it to the global scope, what you're actually doing is creating properties on a global object called window. This works not only for variables, it also works for functions. Now let's say I have a function, my func console.log, hello, and I'm going to reload and run. Now let's examine the window object again. Here you see there is a myfunc property on the window object, which is this function. Okay, so essentially whatever you do in the global scope, right? Whatever you do, which is not uh, in a function, which automatically translates to a global scope, is basically just creating properties on the global object. Now I mentioned that the global object itself depends on the runtime and in the case of a browser it makes sense that it's a window because the window is the starting point for the page to render and for the script to execute. Now this is again different for different runtimes. If you're looking at something like Node, the global object is an object called global and then there are other runtimes which would have different global objects. But the point is that in the JavaScript runtime, at least according to the spec, there is one global object that is available across the board. And whenever you create global variables, you're essentially creating properties on that global object.